Hello everyone, I'm just back here to make a video because I've seen shared around quite a lot on Facebook and on Twitter is this post by Dick Ventures, which is an archaeological digging company who was at Lindisfarne and it's of this small coin of Ethelred I of Wessex and actually I was lucky enough last week to be on Lindisfarne and to be part of the team that was digging up this part of the Anglo-Saxon monastery and so I wanted to make a little video because a lot of people seem very interested in this coin about the coin and its significance, whose coin it was, who minted it, where it came from, how it got there but also the process of how we tried to figure this out. Now I will say before I start that I am not an expert on Anglo-Saxon coins, I'm not a numismatist and so if you are and I'm t saying things that are completely wrong or you have a better theory then I would love to hear them in the comments below. I have done a year at the University of Cambridge studying Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Celtic so I have got a little bit of background in paleography and I have studied some other Anglo-Saxon coins and coinage so I do have a bit of a background and might know a little bit what I'm talking about but please don't take everything in this video as gospel this is just me talking from my experience and some of my hypotheses about this coin. Now I think that it was found sort of last week, almost exactly a week ago, on either the Tuesday or the Wednesday. And obviously when it came out of the ground it had been in the mud for over a thousand years so it was still very muddy but luckily the finds team uh, in the finds room were able to polish it up and then we were able to have a look at it. But even when it had just come out of the mud you could already see on the obverse of the coin, so that's the side of the coin that has the face, the head of the king on it that this was going to be a good find and it certainly proved to be that way. Now we could see already very quickly that around the head of the king on the obverse of the coin there were the, the name Athelred Rex and this is the name of the king, King Athelred in Latin and as well you have the fact that it's right facing the head and you see that back on most of the Roman coins that in the traditional Roman way which the Anglo-Saxons uh, very much looked up to the Romans as these very important figures of both Christianity and authority and organization so they, they admired the Romans in many ways so they also most of the time have their kings facing to the right just as the Romans did it's on the reverse of the coin that things got a bit more interesting though because we had uh, on the other side of the coin essentially you had three lines that went ac across that cut the coin into thirds and on each third you had an inscription and now the top third it wasn't too hard to read what it said it was mon and now initially I thought this might be from moat which you often see on Anglo-Saxon coins and it's believed to mean something like made or made by and then you often get the name of the minter so uh, or, or the place where it was made so you'd get an inscription like moat on Lunden so made in London there was a famous mint there but in this case it seemed very clearly to be a uh, mon but then in the second line we got a little bit confused because there wasn't the obvious name of the place as I would expect from seeing this moat and instead at the end on the third third essentially you also had the ETA ETA and this also confused us we were looking at this for many hours and thinking what could this be how can we decipher this place name and it was only quite a bit later when I had the idea to look at the other coins that had been minted in Ethelred's reign that I realized that actually the top third and the bottom third are part of the same word so instead of being mon and then something and then eta it was moneta and now that made a lot more sense and suddenly I was thinking aha moneta that's Latin and something to do with money like our word for money and lo and behold it is to do with money it means something like minted by and also by looking at the other coins from Ethelred's period these coins are actually called lunettes and they were also minted in Alfred's reign but I'll get into that in a little bit that the middle line of this, these three lines has the name of the minter on it rather than the place. We were looking and we were trying to see if it could possibly see something like Wintanchiastra which is the name of uh, Winchester which there was a mint there is the capital of the West Saxons at the time and that the ETA at the end might be some kind of shortened version, abbreviated version of uh, Eastra so from, from the Chiastra part, the fort part um, but actually the middle part was the name of the minter which turned out to be Leobinch we hadn't worked this out one because it wasn't particularly clear on the coin what exactly was inscribed and two because well I'd never heard the name Leobinch before it's not a very common Anglo-Saxon name but that is the name of the minter there now 
Once we'd figured out what sort of, that it was a coin of Ethelred and also where it was from, that led us to some very interesting places and put some very interesting questions into our head. Because Wessex, as you will know, is not right next door to Northumbria and we were uh, in the north of Northumberland at this time, but even so, this was a very long way away from Wessex. And what makes this even more interesting is that the time that Ethelred ruled, he comes to the throne in 865. And if you know much about the dates of the Vikings in Britain, you will know that 865 is the year that the so-called Mukulhera, or the Great Heathen Army, lands in England. And that's sort of the process in which the Dane law is established. The Danes override most of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms in England and create a, an area that became under their rule in some places for, well, almost the next century. And this is a very interesting period because you wouldn't really expect to find a coin from way down in the south in Wessex, which turned out to be, well, the last kingdom, uh, if you'll forgive the pun, that held out against the Danes. You wouldn't expect to find a coin then appearing from that kingdom so far north in Northumbria. And it becomes even more interesting because actually Northumbria, most people will think Northumbria was overrun by the Danes. And this is true to a degree. In York there was a very large battle and the kings of Northumbria were killed at that battle and the Danes seemed to have won control. And obviously York, the name comes from the Viking name for the city Jorvik and it became the centre of the Dane law, the Northern Dane law and the kingdom of Jorvik. But actually north of the Tees, so a river that's now in County Durham, in the area that had been Bernicia rather than Deira, which was the southern kingdom of Northumbria, we actually get a different situation because we still get people up there when the Vikings are nominally in control of Northumbria who are called the Earls or the High Reeves of Bambra. And Bambra, or Bebenbur as it was called back then, had been the seat of power of the Bernicians. As well as this, we see in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle in 875 that the Danes of York are um, having to put down a rebellion. And after this rebellion, they go north to the area of Bernicia and they raid places like Tynemouth and Hexham, both of which, well, Hexham is uh, three stops on the train away that way. Uh, and Tynemouth is, well, you can get there about the same distance to the other side. I'm slap bang in the middle of those places. But this is northern... Northumberland, or it would have been the north northern part of Northumbria back then, of Benicia. So clearly the Danes aren't quite in control up here, as well as the fact that up in the northern part of Northumbria, you don't really get very many Danish place names, as you do around York, where you get an absolute ton, like Scarborough. Uh, or Hoosthwaite, for example, um, or uh, Thirsk, places like this. These all are very clearly Old Norse place names, whereas up here the concentration is much, much less than it is in places like Yorkshire or uh, Lincolnshire, areas like that, where we know that the Danes settled. So that adds an interesting question then, that if the uh, Bambra Earls remain sort of semi-autonomous, then what's this coin doing way up here? Now there have actually been other coins that have been found minted by Leobinch. And there is one other that was minted during the reign of King Ethelred, who ruled from 865, the year of the Great Heathen Army coming, to 871, where he actually died of wounds fighting against the Vikings. And of course, Ethelred's brother was Alfred the Great, who continued the struggle against the Danes. And we know that Leobinch survived because we find four other lunettes that have been minted, but then under the name of King Alfred. So Leobinch continued to mint. And they've actually traced Leobinch, this minter, to Canterbury at the time. I think most of the Wessex minters were active in Canterbury at this point, that they'd moved them into Canterbury where there was a well-established mint, and they were minting for Wessex, as that had become part of Wessex at that time. But then there's the very interesting question of how on earth did this coin from Wessex end up on Holy Island, on Lindisfarne, where this great Anglo-Saxon monastery was. But one thing that I should say before I go into that is that many people think of monasteries as being this very holy, secluded places. And while this is to a certain extent true, it is Lindisfarne is across a tidal causeway and does become an island for parts of the day, as we found trying to get there from the mainland with taxis was rather difficult. But at the same time, Lindisfarne was also incredibly connected. It's just across the water from Bambra, um, which is the capital of Bernicia, which was where these high reeves were still in control. 
So there would have been markets, there would have been people coming, uh, and that is indeed what we found when we were digging up, that there was definite signs of life on the island, despite the fact that after all these rebellions and raids in 875, it says that the community of Lindisfarne, the monks there, the community of St. Cuthbert, left the island because of all the Viking attacks and then went wandering around Northumbria, finally settling in Durham, where St. Cuthbert remains to this day, and that is essentially where the community of Durham comes from, from Lindisfarne. But this coin then must have been, it, it can't predate 865 because Ethelred wasn't king before 865. But it does mean that right on the cusp of them apparently leaving because of all this Viking activity, there's this coin showing up from Wessex in Lindisfarne. So it does raise a lot of very interesting questions and we have to start to wonder how much truth is there in the account that they all left? And actually quite a lot of the things we were finding, depending on the date of course, which it's very hard to date, might suggest that it kind of continued on longer, that not everyone left Lindisfarne. And I certainly don't think that everyone will have left Lindisfarne. And I think also that the evidence of this coin is perhaps evidence that already very early on, if this coin had been given as Danegeld, as tribute, because we know that King Ethelred and his successor King Alfred both paid tribute, and under King Alfred the number of minters in Wessex was doubled, then it could very well be the case that this, through trade and other things, um, made its way to the north, probably in Viking hands, and that already very soon these Vikings were already trading with the people to the north, and with people like the monks at Lindisfarne, because we know they would have kept cattle, we know they made things, uh, they were, I mean, they were producing things. It's essentially a mini market, a mini business, because the monastery was absolutely huge. So they were producing things and selling things and buying things, etc. So it's quite an interesting possibility to think that this coin might have been traded right the way up from Wessex to Lindisfarne, uh, to some of the monks there, and that that's when we've now picked this out of the ground that the last time it was potentially dropped um, or uh, rather than being placed, although it's been very heavily ploughed the area we were digging, so it's not entirely certain. But yeah, that's some of the information about about that, which I thought was very interesting that we found this coin and that this is some of the, the backstory behind it, the potential backstory behind the coin and where it was found and the historical context of this, as well as our process of trying to uh, figure out what it said on there in our very amateur way. But I think in the end, um, we I think we've got it nailed really. But it'll be interesting to see what we find out. There's gonna be more excavations there next year, and I think I should be going along again. Um, so I might make some more videos about this, as well as the name stones and things like that. But I thought it was a very interesting find, and I'm very excited to see what we find in the future. But anyway, let me know your ideas in the comments below Hello, uh, if you're a numismatist or a historian or just interested or have any more questions then I would be really happy to get in touch. Alright everyone, so thank you very much for watching. Oh, also before I go, this is a new design of the History with Hilbert merchandise which is coming, I'll get my mule news out of the way. My friend has very kindly uh, made these designs for me. So that's a Viking ship, I thought that was a very relevant one to include for this video. And I also have this one, some kind of, I'm not sure if you can see it very well, Spanish Civil War kind of merchy things there but more of that coming soon these are just the prototypes i might make one or two alterations before i set it public and let you all have at it but anyway i've been hilbert this has been the history thank you very much for watching and i'll see you all again very soon